Hello everybody, today we're going to do a summer favourites video. It has been a while since I've just talked about things that I like. And also, I'm doing this to make me feel a bit better about the fact that it's technically no longer summer. And did we even get a summer here in the UK? I'm honestly mad about it. I think I could have handled a whole other year of just staying in the UK for summer if the weather had been good, but alas, I am just feeling like I really need a holiday. <laughs> First up, some book favourites. I recently read Lex Crouch's debut, Reputation, which I absolutely loved, especially the subtle and not so subtle Mean Girls references. I had a great time finding those and taking pictures of them and sending them to Lex, just like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Some of them like literally made me cackle out loud. I was like, oh no, they didn't, but they did. But this is a Regency era novel about a group of early 20 somethings all getting boozy parties. It's so good and Lex's writing is just so funny, but it also deals with some really heavy topics around alcohol and grief and sexual assault. Would recommend and just very excited for all of Lex's future books. I also finally read A Beautifully Foolish Endeavour by Hank Green. I waited until the paperback came out because I'm a paperback kind of person, um, but this is the sequel part two of two to the Carls series. Um, the first book was an absolutely remarkable thing. And I definitely enjoyed the first one more, even though it's sci-fi, that one felt like more realistic. But this one is just like action packed. Like it puts you right in where the last book left off. And it's just like, go, 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 go. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. The stakes felt very high. And I loved that you got a look into all of the different characters that they all told their story and I think my fave character is Miranda. I love Miranda. Did this book freak me out in terms of one, a potential dystopian reality future for us all, but also present day capitalism and how very few rich people are just dictating everything at this point. Yeah. Um, and the final book I wanted to share with you is Jews Don't Count by David Badil. Now, I am Jewish, you may or may not know that. Um, my parents got this me for my birthday, which was in February, and I only just got around to reading it. It is very short, but it is just jam packed. And I wrote about this book recently in my newsletter and kind of shared a bit more in depth about my thoughts on that. Um, and a lot of you replied and were so lovely um, and had lots of really interesting things to say. Um, but essentially this book may or may not have like, shifted my understanding of my own Jewishness and understanding of anti-Semitism. You know, occasionally you read a book that just kind of like shifts everything for you and like suddenly you're like looking at the world in a different way and yourself in a different way. Well, that's this book, short but powerful. This book is very much aimed at people on the left, people who call themselves progressives and the whole like Jews don't count thing is that basically in terms of uh, social justice activism and identity politics, there is one marginalized group that has been left out and that is Jews. And there's just so much interesting stuff in here about like internalized anti-Semitism and like internalized shame around being Jewish and people often like hiding the fact that they're Jewish because some people who are Jews can pass as non-Jews. I am one of those people. I have to like come out as Jewish, which I'd never thought of that being a thing that I do. I'm just doing a lot of processing around this book and my own Jewishness at the moment. And I would love to kind of explore a lot of these topics in more detail for Vlognica this year. We're actually gonna make Vlognica Jewish, <laughs> like who knew? But if you didn't know, I make eight videos for the eight days of Hanukkah and they're not very Jewish <laughs> videos, but I would love to actually explore some more of that stuff in those videos. So if you have any recommendations for like topics or guests that I could get on the channel to talk about um, being Jewish, talk about anti-Semitism, specifically also like anti-Semitism on the left. I would love to hear your suggestions. But yes, that's enough of an identity crisis for one video. Next up, I have a TV favorite, which is Sweet Tooth, which is on Netflix. And Dan and I hadn't really heard much about it before we 
dived in. It's set in a pandemic. So all I'll say is that if you do not want to be consuming any fictional media that is about a virus, that is about a pandemic, then maybe give this one a miss. However, if you're one of those people who's just like, yes, give me the pandemic books, TV shows, films, give it to me, then this one might be for you. It's also just like really adorable and really wholesome. There are like three main storylines that are all happening. Uh, some of them a bit more like intense than others, but essentially the premise is that there is a virus that breaks out around the same time that suddenly all babies start being born as like hybrid human animal babies. And the storyline kind of moves back and forth from like 10 years after it all kicked off to kind of like some stuff that was happening at the time. It's dystopian, it's fantasy. Our main character is this kid called Gus who is a hybrid and the actor who plays him is just so good. Like when you get like a good child actor, it's just like it's so exciting to watch because I'm just like, you're so talented and you're so young. I absolutely loved how all of the different stories kind of like came together at the end and it really left you on a cliffhanger. I was expecting them to kind of like round something up, like this big kind of like standoff to happen in the series and then to kind of like put the pieces in place for a season two, but no, they just like left us hanging and I'm like, but what's gonna happen? <laughs> um, so I really hope they make a season two. Next up, I have some film favorites. I don't know how new these are, but they're new to me. The first is a film called Chef, which if you like food, if you like cooking, oh, this film made me so hungry and just so appreciative of just like, beautiful food but it's about this talented famous chef in this like fancy fancy restaurant and he wants to like try something new with his menu but the manager of the restaurant like won't let him he's like you have to do like the fan favorites and then this uh food critic comes in and absolutely slams him he's just like the food is boring and he like goes bah! and quits and starts a taco truck wait is it a taco truck I don't know, he starts a food truck. But it's just such a joyful film. And a lot of it is also about the main character's relationship with his son. And my friend Jack Howard recently told me that apparently Chef is based on the director's experience of making Iron Man 2 because it's the same director. I didn't fact check him, but Jack seems to know stuff about films. The second film that is an absolute favorite is called Palm Springs. And Dan and I were just browsing and we watched the trailer and we were like, okay, this could be some mindless fun going in with very low expectations. But oh boy, was this such a good film? It's basically a Groundhog Day style story, but one character has been in the Groundhog Day for like, who knows how long, like years maybe. And then he meets somebody else and they like fall into the same Groundhog Day scenario. It is so funny. It's Andy Samberg and Kristen Milioti. And I wasn't that familiar with Kristen Milioti, but oh my God, she's so good. This is a film that I don't really think I've heard anything about and have not really heard people talking about. And it was just such a pleasant surprise um, to watch. And I just want to let you know, because it's one that you could just like easily go past of like, oh, this is just like a generic rom-com or like a generic comedy, but like, it was so good. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if my bar for like a good time has been lowered because of the pandemic. And like, if I watched some of this stuff in like normal times, I would be like, eh. But hey, it was a good time. I had a good time. Next up, I have some games favorites. I had been in a bit of a game slump until recently, but Dan introduced me to mini motorways and that ruined an entire weekend of mine. But basically, you gotta get the little cars to the little factories. You gotta build your roads to connect the houses to the factories. But as time goes on, more things spawn on the map and it gets super complicated and you gotta include roundabouts and motorways and bridges and maybe some tunnels and whew, it's very exciting. I spent maybe like an entire week just any free moment I had playing it. But my friend Taha taught me this trick with it. And he said that he normally gets around like 4,000 points with the trick, but then 
I got over 4,000 points without using his trick. So now I feel like I've won the game and I feel like I can step away from it now. <laughs> you know, you just like have a goal, you just have like a bar that you need to meet and then you meet it and you're like, I can leave now. She says, as now I'm thinking about mini motorways again and I'm like, mm, no, I could do with playing that again. Apparently there's also a mini subway. So maybe I'll have to download that <laughs> and play that. And the game Humankind finally came out. Dan and I have played some of the like closed beaters because Dan is a bit of a game nerd and like had me sign up for them all <laughs> so that I could play them. But Humankind is kind of like civilization. It's a 4X game. <laughs> I didn't know what that meant until Dan explained it to me. But oh my god, can I remember? Exploration, exploitation. There's two more. I could look it up, but I don't care. I haven't played to the end of Humankind yet. I'm still getting used to it. I'm still figuring things out, but I just love a game with maps. I love exploring. I love building my culture, my civilization, it's all very exciting. When I was playing a lot of Civ, I was very good at it. So it is kind of frustrating playing a similar game and not really knowing what I'm doing or knowing what the strategy is. But we're getting there, just, just gotta put more hours in, Hannah, put more hours in. Speaking of putting hours in, the other game that I've been playing is tennis. Does, can I count this as a game? It is a game, it's a sport. Tennis has been a lifeline for me this summer. I finally have a hobby that is mine and I've not monetized it, although I'm talking about it now, so maybe I'm monetizing it. But it doesn't feel like I'm monetizing it at the, when I'm playing. But basically since they allowed outdoor sport in April, I like signed up to some group coaching and I've basically been doing group coaching like once or twice a week and I've gotten so into it that I've even signed up to my local tennis league. And the way that that works is that they put you in a group of people who they think are like a similar level to you and then they put you all in touch and then you arrange matches uh, and you report the scores to the local tennis league. I will say though, it's a mixed singles league. So I pretty much lose most of my matches because I'm playing against men, but it's still a good time. And like, this is the most exercise that I've done in probably since I played tennis as a teenager, but I'm just like having so much fun. Like, I just love it so much. But we'll see how it goes as it starts to get darker and colder, but floodlights are a thing, so. Come on. Next up, I have a fashion fave and it is this bum bag. This isn't anything new. I've had this for a few years. I think I got it on ASOS, but I recently busted it out again because I have been riding my bike, which I'll talk about in a bit. And I recently got a rack for the back of it. And so I have like my bike bag, which is like all of my stuff. Cause I don't like having things on my back when I'm cycling, especially in the summer. <laughs> because <laughs> then I get like sweaty on my back, but I still need kind of like easy access to like my phone and my keys and things like that. And so that's where this comes in. Oh yeah. So, you know, I'm not cool enough to like wear the bum bag like this, because I know that that's like what the cool kids are doing. I very much like wear it around my waist the way that boomers intended. Very useful, very practical. I can't believe that these things are fashionable now. Like I remember back in my day, back in my day, you wouldn't be seen dead in one of these. They were so uncool, so uncool. And yet, look at us now. Next up, I have some food favorites that I'm very excited to share. So I recently discovered a local vegan refill shop, like one of those places where you bring your own Tupperware and then you like wear your Tupperware and then you like put all your stuff in your Tupperware and then you weigh it and you pay for it, you take it home. That's how shopping works, Hannah. Okay, but they have these vegan marshmallows and the brand is called Dandies. I was honestly just taken aback by how much like regular marshmallows these taste like. They are so good. I can't comment on how well these vegan marshmallows melt and crisp up because I haven't been near a fire and we have an electric hob at home. How safe is it to toast marshmallows on an open gas stove? I don't know, um, but that is something that I would do. I don't know if I would recommend it, I'm not sure. But I've just been eating them whole and raw, but they're so good, they're so good. It just tastes like a regular marshmallow. I don't understand. I took a picture of the ingredients label. Tapioca syrup, cane sugar, filtered water, tapioca starch, haraginin, soy protein, natural vanilla flavor. And it's kosher, gluten-free, dairy-free, 
and no gelatin, no corn syrup, made with non-GMO ingredients and no artificial flavors or colors. So good. My next food favorite is the Sorted Food Meal Packs app. And this is not spawned by them, but I do know them. I like to think of them as my like, older YouTube cousins. <laughs> they did get me into some VidCon parties like back in the day and that's what older cousins are for, right? Mm -hmm. But Dan and I love watching their YouTube videos and so I heard about their app through the YouTube videos and I was like, let's try this out because I'm a recipe follower. I love recipes. I love meal boxes like where you get the ingredients and you get all the recipes like I'm all about that kind of stuff and we we're like let's try this thing and see what this is like and essentially they release new meal packs every week and you get one credit a week to like pick a meal pack and in each meal pack is three recipes with one ingredients list so then you go shopping and then all of the ingredients that you bought will get used up across these three recipes. So good. We've had some real yummy meals and I've got no images to show you because I just eat them. A fave one that we had recently was like a creamy fennel pasta with meatballs scenario, which is great. And then also one of my favorite things about it is that the instructions in the app, you can read them or there's like a narrator who like tells you what to do, which is so handy when you're like, busy doing one thing and then you can just like listen to the next instruction. So good. And my final favorite in the stuff category because miscellaneous, I don't even know what to call it at this point, is my bike. So my bike is a buzz bike bike and it is gifted from them. When I found out that they existed, I was like, this service would be perfect for me. Essentially, it's a bike subscription. They're currently London only, but the reason why I wanted to try it out because a couple of years ago, I had two bikes stolen within the space of six months. And with Buzzbike, you're paying like a monthly subscription, but if your bike gets stolen, then they'll replace it for 50 quid, which just for like relieves so much like stress and anxiety that I have about riding a bike. They also put on regular events around London. They do this one called The Lab, which I haven't been able to get to yet, which I really need to because they basically teach you how to like fix a flat tire and like do bike maintenance, which I have no idea about. And then they also do these like social bike rides. And I went to one of those recently with my friend Rosianna and it was like loads of fun. So yes, I don't know how much longer they're going to give me a gifted subscription for, but I'm pretty sure at this point, like I think I've had it for like three, four, five months at this point, um, like I would pay for it just to kind of like have that peace of mind. If you want 10 pounds credit, you can use my code when you sign up, but I use my bike so much now. I cycle to and from work, so I basically use it every day, and then I cycle to and from tennis, which I'm doing like twice a week. So my bike gets used a lot. I've been going a bit further afar, like to different friends' houses. I still haven't cycled into central London yet. I'm a bit scared <laughs> of doing that, um, but maybe one day. I'm building myself up to it. <laughs> but my buzz bike is definitely a summer fave, because even in the cold and in the rain, I have used it so much this summer. Thanks so much for watching. Have you read any of the things that I've mentioned? Watched them, played them? Let me know in the comments. And also if you have any of your own recommendations of things that we should check out. I hope that you're doing well and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.